Hi, I'm Franz Pair with Cyber Skyline, and today we're going to be analyzing CAN bus. And I'm going to give you first all a, a quick primer on CAN bus. So if you're not familiar with what CAN bus is, it is a standard that allows devices to communicate with each other, primarily in cars. A lot of automotives use CAN bus. And the way that it works is that there's a single medium, typically um, a, a electrical cable, a wire, that connects all the different devices together. And it's a, it's a shared medium. So the messages that are being sent from the different devices, they're being broadcasted to everything on that shared meeting, to all of those devices. And each individual device on the CAN bus, uh, they will actually decide, do I want to ignore this message or do I want to do something with it? And in a car, there's so many different components of your car that all need to talk to each other. So um, I've got some of the various components that you can see up here on the screen. So for example, as your car is, um, is, uh, is driving, you have your dashboard, you have a little gauge icon up there. Well, you are getting information about the various components of your car. So your engine, it is giving information to your dashboard in terms of the RPM. So how many times uh, the rotations per minute, how, how quickly is the engine moving? Um, you also get information about your speed. So your tires, they're sending some information to your speedometer. You might also see a, a tire pressure warning, your little tire pressure, uh, like, like the warning light that comes up on there. Well, there's a tire pressure sensor that has to send that information to your dashboard somehow. And that's all being sent via CAN bus. And even things like the airbags, right? How do the airbags know to deploy? There's often a lot of sensors that are being are measuring different, uh, different like you know physics, the 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 kinetic energy, how much movement there is, the impact, and that will determine when the airbags go off. So all these different devices within your car, they're all connected with CAN bus. Um, now, the the reason why we're looking at CAN bus is because this is a protocol that devices, computers are using to communicate with each other. And so this is an area where cybersecurity can be a big thing. And when it comes to automotives, especially, we have this huge rise of self-driving cars. There are a lot of cars now that are connected to the internet. That didn't used to be the case. It used to be, you know, cars all mechanical. Um, I, I have an older car, which doesn't have any internet connections, right? I got the radio and that's it. But now, you've got like new Teslas and all, the, all these fancy self-driving cars and there are constantly going connecting to the cloud and giving information about your GPS location, all these sorts of things. And that is an attack vector. And so CAN bus is still a, an old technology that we are using a lot of these cars. And it is important that security is being considered when people are developing cars and they have these various components in the car, they're sending messages over the CAN bus. What could an adversary do? What could a hacker do? if they were able to intercept those messages, maybe in, in, inject some malicious messages. Um, there are situations where, you know, in, in theory, if someone's able to kind of plug a device in your car when you're not noticing, it can send some messages into the CAN bus and confuse your all the systems within your car. And so this is a huge area where security needs to be concerned. Now, as it relates to us today, we're going to be analyzing CAN bus traffic. And we actually have the ability to do so in Wireshark, depending on how you are uh, creating your capture. CAN bus by itself, uh, th this is not something that you can just plug your computer straight into your car and get this information. It requires some software to be able to kind of encapsulate the CAN bus data. But if that happens, well, then you can load that in Wireshark and you can uh, dissect it and try to understand what's going on. Now, that being said, the dissector, the default standard dissector in Wireshark is quite limited. Uh, when I open it up, I don't know if it'll be different from you all, but when I open it up, I really only get information about the ID. That's basically the, the type of message, the type of CAN bus message that is being sent. And then it'll highlight the data field. So the information being sent along with that message. So it doesn't tell me you know, what type of message that is or how to understand what the data means. That's not something it'll do. And um, it, you, you're going to have to do a lot more than just look at the data in Wireshark. Now, if you are going to subsequently do some analysis, one big tip I would recommend is use the filter, this can.id filter in Wireshark to look for specific types of messages because of the way that CAN, uh, CAN bus works is in theory, if 
if the developer has set it up correctly, each different type of message. So maybe that's a uh, an update to your speed or your RPM. Um, those those messages should have their own unique ID, and you can filter by those IDs to specifically look for one type of message and then try to analyze the data for that type of message. Because if you are looking at multiple different IDs at the same time, it's like apples and oranges. I'm, I would assume that if the messages have different IDs, the data that they hold is structured completely differently because it's supposed to be a different type of message. So therefore the, the data should also be in a different structure, a different format as well. So um, I mentioned that you can't just look at Wireshark. You're going to have to do some additional analysis. And this is where having some sort of specification or some code will help you understand the data. And one of the challenges that we have in our practice, uh, practice gymnasium gives you this code snippet that you have to analyze and actually try to make sense of, um, a, of this CAN bus data. And I'm going to walk through kind of the code here and step through it and show you kind of how you can read this code and then go backwards in terms of interpreting in, in human terms, in, in English terms, what is actually going on here? Like, like how is this data being stored and how can we read the data? So starting first here at the top, we have the, the very first thing is we're setting two integers. The first one is speed underscore ID that is set to a value of 589. And then, if we, if we just kind of uh, quickly like scroll through the rest of the code, it's not too long. We want to see where is that being used. We want to understand what speed ID means. And it is used in exactly one location. And it's on this line here where there's an if frame dot can ID equals speed ID. So there's some sort of check to see if a frame has this specific speed ID. And kind of looking at the rest of the code encapsulating this here, we can see this while loop. So it appears to be kind of looping through and reading messages. The line before this if statement actually has a read data command, a read data function that's being called. And so it appears, if I had to assume context clues here, that <clears throat> there's this loop that is continuing kind of forever. Um, and then it and then it will um, each iteration, it will read the data and each data is going to be one frame read. And then it will go through this if statement and check, uh, check to see if the frame matches this CAN bus ID, the speed ID, which is 589. So we know that there's a check for this 589. All right, now what happens? Well, we also have this speed underscore POS. Uh, it's set to three, and then where is this being used? Well, the first place it's being used here is in the line after this if statement. And what we can see is that a variable is being instantiated. This is the speed variable, it's a double. Double means that this number supports decimal points. And we can see that speed is equal to, and if you're not familiar with the, um, with the C language syntax, this might be a little bit confusing, but I'll break it down. Uh, what it is doing is that it is uh, looking at the frame and it is it is um, going into the data field. So the data is a field of frame. And then you can see the square brackets here. That means that we're going to be indexing into an array. So there is a data field inside frame and we're going to go into the third index position three in the, in the data array. And then we have this um, double arrow, this uh, uh, this less than, less than, you know, and uh, if you're not familiar with that, that is a bit shift. And we have a bit shift of eight, so that's what the eight is afterwards. Um, effectively, what this is doing is that each, each bit shift is, um, is uh, effectively kind of, putting the data to the second exponent. So we are squaring the result eight times, which is the equivalent to, uh, uh, sorry, we sorry. Uh, every time we do a bit shift, it's the equivalent of multiplying by two. And so we're multiplying by two eight times, which is the equivalent of multiplying by 256. So we're taking the value in data three and we're multiplying it by 
256. So that's our initial kind of starting point for what speed is. And then what we're doing on the next line here is that we're going back into that data array and now we are adding one to speed POS. So this is now the byte to the right of the previous byte that we looked at. And so um, we're gonna take whatever that value is and we're gonna increase speed by that value. Simple enough. Then the next line, we are going to divide speed by 100. Now, once you kind of look through the whole code, you might be able to deduce a little bit of the you know, what is the implication of this? Like, why are we dividing by 100? From what I gathered, it's that the data being sent by the CAN bus message, it's being sent as just a whole number that doesn't support decimal points, but it's supposed to represent a number that does have decimal points. And we're dividing by 100 because that will be the equivalent of adding in two decimal points into speed. So, um, we're dividing by 100 to get the actual speed with two decimal points of precision. And then the next line, we are multiplying by this 0.62, whatever, whatever, whatever. That might seem like a very weird number to be multiplying the speed by. And so if you go online, you start kind of searching around for like, what's the significance of this number? You might stumble upon the fact that this actually is the conversion from kilometers per hour to miles per hour. So one kilometer per hour is approximately 0.62 miles per hour. So it could be that the devices, let's just say the devices that are sending this information about the speed, the device sending the information about the speed is sending that speed in kilometers per hour times 100. And the device that's reading this information is having to display the information in miles per hour. And so it'll have to divide by 100 so we can get those two decimal points. And then it has to multiply by 0 0.6213, you know, whatever's uh, to convert this into miles per hour. And then at that point, it calls this function called update speed, but we don't have any reference to what update speed is other than context clues here. Update speed probably would refer to updating the speed on the dashboard or some other device, for example. So. This is what this code is doing. And uh, this is gonna be very helpful as we go and look at the CAN bus data because <clears throat> you'll, you'll, you'll start seeing immediately right away when I look at the data in Wireshark, you're not gonna have any idea what this actually means. It's not going to look like any sort of indication for speed. It's just gonna look like numbers. So uh, this is, is very important. So let's go and check out the data here and uh, see what we're working with. All right, so what I'm going to do first here is I'm just going to zoom in to my, um, I'm gonna zoom in to the Wireshark screen here because it might be a little bit tricky to see at the moment. So, all right, hopefully, hopefully this will make things a little bit easier to see. Okay, so what I've done is I've opened up the can dump.pcap that was provided in the challenge. And I can see here, uh, these are the various, um, the various messages that were being sent over CAN bus. So clicking on some of these, I can see that I've got some ID numbers for these. The data here is just this hexadecimal value. So just kind of going up and down here, the data for, some of these are different lengths. They're, it's just, it's just a number, uh, like a hexadecimal number, like it doesn't really have any meaning. Just looking at this, I couldn't tell you what the speed of this vehicle might be. It, it just looks like a random number. And so this is why we need to go back to uh, what we saw in the code, because if we go back to the code, going back to the code, So referring back to the code here, we can see that the, the speed ID that we might want to look for here is 589. So we're looking for the ID of 589. 
So what I'll do is I'll take my own device from earlier and I will do a filter for can.id equals five equals equals 589. And immediately what we can see is in this info column here, all the results show 589. So we've successfully filtered on what we would assume would be these speed messages, these speed update messages coming via Canvas. And then now if we go uh, back to our code, we know that uh, what we need to do is we need to get the data and then we can start manipulating the data and we can figure out you know, what information um, uh, like what, what bytes do we need to start kind of processing in order to ca calculate the speed? And I'm going to do this by hand. So, uh, we'll do it by hand first. And then when you go and try to solve this yourself, you could go and try to kind of optimize this a little bit and, um, and write a little script to help do it for you. So it's a little bit faster, but I'm going to do it by hand. So what I am um, doing right now is I'm putting up a little JavaScript terminal here to just help me keep track of all the variables and everything as we go through this. I, I use JavaScript primarily because it's a scripting language. It's something that I can run kind of in the, in the, in the, in this like terminal prompt environment. Um, I can get a, effectively I can get a console for this rather than uh, a programming language like C where you have to compile it and you have to run it explicitly it just takes a little bit longer to make changes and run and see the results uh, than, uh, than just having a little JavaScript terminal here to help you out. And so if we pull up the CAN bus over here, and what I'll also do is I will go and pull up the, the code that we had for this packet capture. So here we have the, the code, but we're not gonna worry about that just right now. We are um, going to come and look and just take one of these. I'm just gonna randomly choose one of these packets and I'll choose this one here. And I'm going to select the data and then copy value. So I'm copying the value of this of this uh, of this one random speed update packet. So I'm just gonna call this raw, and this is just the raw packet. And actually, what I wanna do, to not confuse myself, is that because this is in hex, I'm gonna put spaces to separate this out. And let me, let me zoom in a little bit here to make it a little bit easier for, for you all to read. All right, <laughs> hopefully that is a, a lot easier to read with it kind of zoomed in that way. So um, we now have this raw data and looking at the code here, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I can see that what we want to do is go to position three in this array. So one, oh, sorry, it, it starts at zero, right? So zero, one, two, three. So we're taking this value and we're going to do a bit shift of eight. So this value is zero four. So zero four bit shift eight is 1024. And just to show you that this is the equivalent of multiplying by 256, four times 256 is 1024. So this is the value of speed right now. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna set this speed equals four bit shift eight. So speed is equal to 1024. Now the next thing that we do is we take speed, speed plus equals, zoom in even more here, speed plus equals data at position three plus one. So data at position four. So data at position four, zero, one, two, three, four, that is E1. Now this is in hexadecimal. So um, you can either go and you can do an online hexadecimal conversion. 
in JavaScript, you can refer to hexadecimal values by putting a 0, 8, a 0, x in front of it. So if I do a 0, x, e1, I can get the value of 2, 225. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm going to take speed plus equals 225. So speed is equal to the value of the data one to the right of our initial um, our, our initial starting point here. So speed plus equals 225. So now speed is 1249. Going back over here, now we're going to divide it by 100. All right. Speed equals or equals speed divided by 100. So now our speed is 12.4 12 12.49. 12, okay. And then now we have speed equals speed times this value. So speed equals speed times this value. And uh, JavaScript can be bad with uh, uh, like very many decimal points. So that's kind of why you're seeing this weird, like, you know, nine, 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 eight, nine, 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 nine. It's a, it's a rounding issue. Um, but effectively what we're getting here is that our speed is 7.76 miles per hour. Now that sounds like it could be reasonable, but we probably want to go back and check a couple of these values just for our own sanity to make sure that um, we did our math right and we're actually getting numbers that uh, make sense. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to make this a little bit easier for myself. And um, what I will do is I'm going to create a function where I can just provide the raw value, the raw data, and the function will just tell me what the speed is. So I'm going to call my function calc speed equals and then we're going to take in um, this raw, this raw, um, th this raw array. And instead of putting it as a string, I'm going to have to put this in as a, as a number. And what we will do then is going back to our logic here. So the first thing we do is we go to index three, and then we do a bit shift of eight. So raw index three bit shift eight. All right, that's the first thing that we are doing. And uh, if this looks a little bit complicated, it's because I'm doing it in a single line rather than doing this as, as multiple lines. So we have raw index three bit shift eight. And then what comes next? Well, after a bit shift of eight, we add the value of index four. So plus raw four, okay? And then we divide by 100, and then we multiply by this, this number. So I'm going to wrap this in parentheses. Well, it's already wrapped. So let me, let me just do divide by 100 times this value. All right. So that is our function calc speed. And let's just go and check it out and see if it works. So calc speed and... This was our original raw value. And for the zeros, it doesn't matter. Put it in hex notation, but for, for these final values, it does matter. And let's see what we get. Hopefully I didn't botch this. <laughs> and there you go. This is the same value that we had. So now I have a function where I can just plug in the raw values and I will be able to calculate the speed. So let's go and uh, let's go and check that out. So if I go back to my Wireshark capture here, I'm gonna grab a couple values. So the the one that I I originally got was this one that ended in E1. So the next one below that. It goes from E1 to F3. So I'm just gonna copy, just gonna copy these values and I'm gonna paste them into my um, my clipboard, or sorry, my, uh, my terminal here. And then we can, uh, after I have several of these picked out, we can go and start crunching them. I'm gonna skip forward a little bit here and see if uh, we can find some more drastically different values. So copy value, paste. 
let's go further down. Copy, value, paste. All right, I'm gonna switch back to our terminal. I've got a bunch of syntax errors here because I've just been copying and pasting values for my reference. So let's, we have these three that we wanna check out, this uh, 04F3, this 66F6, and this BAB. So calc speed, or was it speed calc? What did I call it? I already forget. Calc speed. So we're going to check for the 4F3. So 4F3, that gives us a speed of 7.87 7 miles an hour, okay? The next one here is six, uh, six, six F. So six, six F. Ten point two three miles per hour. So, assuming we have this correct, it looks like the the vehicle is accelerating, and then we have this B A B, B A B, and now we're at eighteen miles an hour. So I'm actually curious. What if I go all the way to the end? Uh, let me see what the speed is like at the very end of this capture here. So taking the data here, copy, value, and coming back over here, we have this value here. This is the 8, 8E. So I'm going to take my calc speed. We're going to do 8, 8E. So this is 13.6 miles an hour. So it, maybe the vehicle decelerates at this point. So what we can see here is uh, hopefully we, we got our calculations correct. These all seem like reasonable uh, values for, for uh, miles per hour on a car, right? We're going from you know, eight miles an hour to 20 miles an hour. So there's some acceleration. And then now we're going down to 13.6 miles an hour. So um, I could go through the Wireshark uh, capture and do even more of these, but the process is exactly the same. So you all, you all get the point there. Um, but, but, but what you can see here is that when we're looking at the CAN bus data, looking at the raw data in Wireshark is not particularly helpful. When we went through this, just looking at these values, I mean, I wouldn't know that this, this uh, 88E is supposed to convert into a speed of 13.6 miles an hour. Like that's not something that's like obvious, there's an obvious connection there. And it's because you really need the specification. You do need to understand how is this data supposed to be interpreted. And in, in this case, we had to specifically only, uh, we only looked at these two bytes in the array. We had to take the first byte, we had to multiply it by 256. My guess is that for whatever reason, they, um, they didn't use all the data, like all the space that was available. They only used the last two bytes, even though they had five bytes total. And so to get a larger number, they had to multiply the first value by 256 so that they can have a little bit more precision there. Uh, sorry, so that they can have bigger numbers while maintaining precision. And yeah, but like otherwise, the, the, the first three zeros, they're all zeros every single time. They're completely useless. And it's the last two bytes that are actually used. And you have to take the first one, multiply it by 256, and then you add it to the second byte and then you divide it by a hundred. So you get your decimal points and then you have to multiply that by this, um, this 0.621 value so that we can convert it from kilometers per hour to miles per hour. So hopefully you, you all found that uh, helpful.